Hi everyone. It's the T three two T two minute Terminator. Huh? Whoa, <laughs> dude! Hi everybody. It's Hi. Uh, the two minute Terminator. We are on Terminator three. It's episode five, and we are going from minutes eight to ten. I think that's the best fucking correct intro I've ever fucking done. Let's party. It starts with Christina Loken driving her car. And it starts and it ends, actually, with her Claire Dane shopping with her new bow. <laughs> oh, my God. Hit the music. Ooh. Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. Hi. I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. And we are This is good. The energy's gotta like this. Hi everyone, this is the Two Minute Terminator. I'm Ethan McKinley. Hi Ellie Fitzgerald. Ellie Fitzgerald on the other mic. Are you on the other mic, Ellie? I am. Oh yes, the equalizer's working. Excellent. How are you, Ethan? I'm fine. You've got good energy today, Eleanor. Why why? Is it because you've just been fed? You've not been torn away from rock of fucking love with Brett Michaels to do a podcast with Ethan. Um, who actually suggested that we did one last night? Me. Yeah, because you sense me going, we should do one it's every just, day. It's just hanging around with you, Ethan. Uh, yes, everyone, we are going from uh, <laughs> minutes eight to ten on uh, Terminator 3. If you've not have only just joined the show, what are you doing? Go back to the start and listen to the other 160 episodes. I think your energy affects my energy. <coughs> when you have good energy, I have good energy. But when you don't, I don't. All right. So yeah. you're blaming all the crap shows on me? Yeah. Well, that's kind of turned the corner of the show now, isn't it? That's Shut up. Ruined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let maybe, me play in maybe, the background. Maybe we should, really? Yeah, but just a little bit of welly. Just a bit half. There you go. We can't, yeah, go on. Bit more, bit more. <laughs> bit more. Bit, there you go. Yeah, right. 2003's Terminator 3 starring Christina Loken. Claire Danes, Nick Stahl <laughs> from In the Bedroom, and Arnold McSchwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, every time Ar- um, Arnold, every time Ethan I'm says Ar- uh, Ar- Arnold's Ar- full name, he literally cannot help from saying. Stop Schwarz- saying! Don't say the word. Don't say the word. He Eddie. can't say Schwarzenegger. She thinks I put an eye into it. It's literally my accent. I'm not racist. I've got many black no, friends. No, I'm I know not saying you do it. People are racist. Say that. I'm not racist, but but I'm not racist. I'm not saying it. Know, I'm not saying that you say it on purpose. I think it's just the natural <laughs> way you say it. You're not doing it. You'll just drop it into conversation. I'm like, dude, you do realise that it sounds like you're a... Well, you're playing this Jigaboo music. <gasps> oh, Jigaboo, eh? Well, I actually saw that in a, uh, a clip today. I might include that. It's this newsreader <laughs> talking about Lady Gaga. She's like... Oh, I just can't get into it. This like Jigaboo music and like Lady Gaga said that. Yeah, and the I reporter, the newscaster next to her is actually black, and he goes, Ooh. <laughs> and then the next one she has to apologise saying Jigaboo. I don't think she said it out of malice. I didn't know Jigaboo was something that's exclusively like representative of black oh, yeah. culture. I love Gaga. She can say what the fuck she wants. What I find even funnier is the fact that the Queen's husband called uh, uh, black people African spear chuckers. Do you remember the that? Queen's husband, yeah. Yeah. Right, here she goes. Right. Let's turn Party Boy down. Come on, play. Come on, Gaga. Hit us with some non PC fucking media. Wow, Lady Gaga surprising a lot of people last night with his tribute to the sound of music afterwards. Julie Andrews joined him on stage, gave her a hug, and called it wonderful. It's this very impressive, It's hard to really hear her voice. Lady Gaga. With all the. His face. He's like, this bitch just say jigaboo. <laughs> admittedly, though, Banana? admittedly, I don't. She's just saying. I think she just made that word up on the I spot. I think she made that word up on the spot. So who's complaining? Having said all that, as I always say, he is dressed like really pimp. Oh my god, he is. Because in the next video where she's forced to apologise... They force her to... Okay, so who enforced this apology? He's dressed like a white person. He's like a white man now. He's sold out. Who do you think you are, Wesley Snipes? Yeah. 
I just want to take a moment to address a comment that I made yesterday that got a lot of attention. It's important for me to let you know that I deeply regret my insensitive comment. <laughs> and I truly did not know the meaning of the word and would never intentionally Right, I'm looking up the language. fucking I definition of jigaboo. I apologize for using that language and promise to learn from this. And I hope you will give me that chance. He just, he's, he's yeah, you know, it's just one of those unfortunate things that happen, and you know, it happens to, to everybody. And, and you know, I've been working with you for three for three years, so I, I think and I I've know been your fucking heart. you for two. <laughs> and and I, and you know, and I know you didn't mean it. And, you know, <gasps> oh and, and my god! Let and me read this you out. And your whole family came to my ordination at uh, you know inner city church yeah. in, in the city of Cleveland, and y'all had a great time. Y'all. So, so I know that. that Came to see my family at the inner city church in Cleveland. She's off the hook, for listeners. Yeah. All I needed to say was, damn, and that shit is whack. Okay, so Jigaboo. I've just looked it up on Urban Dictionary. 20 words related to Jigaboo are the N-word, mm -hmm. coon, porch monkey. <laughs> oh my God, Ellie, you're going to get the show shut down. <laughs> I'm not. Black, spook. Is black a bad word? Spade. Hang on, stop. Is black a bad word? Are any of these jungle bunny? I didn't realise that meant the same thing. I've heard that one. I, I <laughs> that only I love. <laughs> the three-letter abbreviation. I only know uh, Jigaboo because it was on Police Academy. They call Darky, books. Niglet, Af African American. No, these are. Patrice says Niglet. Niglet. Yeah, I've seen that before. It's a picture of Piglet with an afro. Oh uh, no! Well, I always thought it was just <laughs> for Patrice is for a young black woman. Moon cricket. Yeah, that's pushing pushing it a bit. I've not heard of any of those really. <clears throat> Yard ape. No, I've heard of that. Yardies. No. Anyway, anyway, on with the show after our <laughs> brief sojourn. Jigaboo, be careful what you say, peeps. Uh, yes, so we are going from minutes eight to ten, and Ethan was talking about our female sound layer. Talking. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, Christina Loken, basically. She was cast as the Terminator, as we discussed in yesterday's episode. She's been in many films like Uva Ball, Ball mm -hmm. who's apparently the worst uh, director in the world. I'm not sure if that's actually true. <laughs> I think he's made a more coherent film than Tommy Wiseau's The Room, which is considered the worst film ever. Which or, I still haven't seen, which I really want to watch. Or maybe Troll 2. I think. Well, I think we should go to the Prince Charles Cinema to actually see The Room. Why? Because I think if you see it in the context with an audience, interactive, and you've got your bag of spoons. Your bag of spoons? Yeah. What does that mean? Oh, what, to throw at the screen? You have to throw spoons at the screen at certain times. Oh. <coughs> The reason being, I think, because the production, they've not really thought about anything. They've obviously gone to a uh, like a home store. Oh, hi, Danny. And they, oh, <laughs> hi, only Danny. Only hi, Danny. <laughs> and uh, they've bought picture frames. They've left the actual insert card that was in the picture frame. So, what are you looking at? You like across at your screen, like you're like terrified. You keep going like there's a like there's a foaming squirrel in a cage next there's to Terminators you. Terminators on. I'm just drawn to it. Yeah, and that it's, fucking it's, horrible it's, chiffon yeah. blouse that this dowie bint's wearing. It's one of the worst Terminator films. It's probably the least exciting part of the movie. I think. I know. But yeah, obviously shopping, the production designer, or maybe probably Tommy Wiseau, the director, has just bought picture frames from a store but left the insert cards in. So there's pictures of cutlery and spoons <laughs> in all the picture frames. So when a scene comes up, when you see a picture frame, everyone digs into their shopping bag of plastic spoons and heaves <laughs> them at the screen. Have you done this? Yeah. <laughs> God. And then usually someone runs to collect them and pass them back. <laughs> so you just keep doing it. Hopefully you can afford to buy enough plastic. Can spoons you do that in this day of like health and safety though? Well, that's why they're plastic spoons. I think in the perfect world you'd have like regular edges, cutlery. Though. But yeah, 2003 is the room, written and directed by Tommy <laughs> Wiseau, uh, considered to, by many to be the worst film ever made. Tommy Wiseau is this weird Eastern European kind of Christopher Walken meets Gene Simmons looking dude. Whoa with a weird you can't really place it accent it's set in san francisco even though all the outdoor scenes on the rooftops are all done on green screen so it's probably done anywhere else and there's a couple of insert shots where tommy walks through a park which i think is in san francisco but that's it done. so yeah no it's uh, and his acting his accent but it's so awful it's the most entertaining thing you've ever seen you can see it, i think at least once a month at the prince Charles cinema at least once a month yeah it does the rounds like labyrinth and stuff uh, Labyrinth isn't on once a month. Labyrinth is on like every six months. I bet Labyrinth will be on every month now for the next few months for sure. Oh, because of Bowie. Because of Bowie. Oh, right, okay. I need to go and see that. I've been meaning to see it for fucking ages at the Prince Charles. Anyway, we digress. Uh, do you have any facts for us, Ethan? Actually, do you know what? You haven't even sent me anything. So you're, I do. You're doing this all, to you, all by Fact yourself. Fact attack. 
Pew, 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 pew. I wasn't looking. Somehow you found me. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the first scene uh, filmed was when the TX is pulled over by the traffic cop. That's our first fact, Ellie. Whoa. Do you like the energy of the show? I love the energy. I think because we're doing it earlier, I don't have to worry about like upsetting anyone in the neighborhood or the house by screaming. But it's early, so we can do this. I just think it's a good day. The TX's breast inflation scene took several <laughs> takes because the air bladders underneath Christina Loken's bra <laughs> made, the, <laughs> made by the effects team didn't work properly. <laughs> Sometimes the bladders popped out or popped up or they just fizzle out. So she'd just have alternating fizzly boobs. Can we find deleted scenes of that happening? We can, but it's on the Blu-ray, which doesn't work because your friend lied about your Blu-ray. Oh! But a we're lie working is on a it. Lie. Oh, if anyone is actually missing that feature length commentary, I promise for the last It is two going months, to happen. I just need to actually physically bring my Blu ray player to London. Uh, is that something you can do? Is it small enough? Well, it's. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, next, if yeah. I drive up again, next time I drive up when I've got the car, when I've got like a run of work. And Get car. Justifiable reason to be here. Absolutely. I will bring it. Awesome. That sounds amazing. And I think we should do make a day of it and probably watch. Terminator 3 as well. Okay, we might have to get a couple of bags of popcorn. I yeah. say a couple, I mean five. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's our first fact. Her alternating breasts would go... <laughs> what size do we reckon they go to? I don't know. I like they go to E. I was going to say E. Boom. <laughs> you want an E? Uh, yeah, you're, you're not... Ooh. The T-E. The T-E. The sexy T-E. <laughs> The Toyota, yeah. blah, 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 blah. the Toyota Motor Corporation uh, provided seven Toyota Tundra trucks, Ellie, to be destroyed in the movie. Toyota will be selling their limited edition Toyota tr trucks from T3. You can barely see My it. sight reading is actually awful. It is really bad. What <laughs> job could I do, Ellie? It's because you've got such small eyes. <laughs> no, I've got a small rabbit mouth. I can't form the words. <laughs> hey. I've got a big jaw and a tiny hole. Does that is adorable. <laughs> So anyway, watching Ethan eat, eat, eat is like watching a rabbit like chewing on a piece of lettuce. I don't know why, <laughs> it just is. Uh, why are you telling us about Toyota, Ethan? Uh, Toyota trucks are fiz featured fissured, uh, quite quite prominent. Jesus Christ! Right, okay. Take a breath, <laughs> Ethan. Stop there's, taking there's no Valium sugar. throughout the day. Uh, Toyota trucks have got a big like show in this film, have a basically. Haribo. Thank you. Toyota trucks are shown <laughs> quite heavily in this uh, film. Uh, Basically, it's the truck. I think they drive. That is the one that's the, like the vets thing with a shack on the back of it, like the veterinary truck they take. Oh right, but that's, that's not Toyota. even that's not in this scene though. It isn't. I dropped it in because uh, I was having to like piece this together, literally like a patchwork quilt, because I didn't watch the commentary. I had to go all over the internet and trawl bits of information. Oh. I will add it to the later date. Here come the boobs popping again. Oh. <laughs> Pleather. That's blatantly pleather. So anyway, yeah, the Toyota Co Motor Corporation, they donated seven 2003 tree. Fucking hell. We're back to Jigaboo. See, the first thing he... So the cops come up to uh, the Terminator. The first thing he does is takes a look at the chips. It's that, it's that typical, like, look down and then look up. He doesn't buy it, though, because she gets weird. And like, I like your, like your, uh, I like your bike. No, she says, I like your gun. All the Terminators just say, hey, that's a nice bike. Yeah, but... She it's just... like I've got a bad feeling about this in the Star Wars films. It's in every film. Yeah, but so she every says Terminator... I like your gun. No, she says bike. She says gun! So anyway, Ailey, did you know that Toyota donated seven <laughs> 2003 Toyota Tundra trucks to the production? No. They were destroyed in the making of the movie, but Toyota will be selling their 2003 Tundra trucks in 2003 in conjunction with the release of Terminator 3. So we're about 13 or 14 years too late. I was going to say. But that's what happened. <laughs> Uh, Claire Danes, of course, plays uh, Kate Brewster, who is the love interest of John Connor. Oh, Brewster. And uh, they carry this character over into uh, Terminator Salvation. She's the character played by Bryce Dallas Howard. Why did they not get Claire Danes to do it again? Daughter. Well, they, uh, they did, but Claire Danes... Said that the, the Terminator 3 movie was so shit she couldn't have well, her no, name. Well, no, I mean, this is obviously a money... <laughs> I think many of the actors involved, this was a money job, particularly for Claire Danes. She's obviously like a very uh, acclaimed actress now. She did uh, Romeo and Juliet with... Uh, Leonardo she did, DiCaprio. yes. She looked shit in that as well. And she's she's got a big part in Homeland. To be fair though, she is quite a good actress. I'll give her that. Oh, she's great. Mm. 
she's just not easy on the eye no but maybe maybe that's a good thing maybe we'd be distracted by her beauty uh and wouldn't notice her acting well she's actually a last much. minute replacement uh this was the last well she was the last casting of the four main actors uh in the movie basically her audition was so last minute she was still learning her lines during the shoot oh shit oh eminem's <laughs> fuck <laughs> i wanted to prove you wrong Wait, where's the movie? Well, in the movie, right, Kate Brewster has red hair and mentions that John Connor and herself went to the same school together the day before the T-101 and the T-1000 arrived. Mm-hmm. Kate and John made out in Mike Kripke's basement. Now, in the previous film, Ellie, pay attention, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Yeah. The T-1000 questions a red-haired girl at the Galleria, remember? Because the, yeah. The, gal- the Galleria? Okay. So he asked her if she knows where John Connor is. And she goes, oh, we might be at the Galleria. So it is believed that the red-haired girl in Terminator 2 is actually Kate Brewster. And it's possible that John <gasps> may have told Kate that he was going to the Galleria when they were in Mike Kripke's basement the day before, which is the same night the T-101 arrived and the T-1000 from the future. <laughs> Mind's blown. So, yeah, the little girl that actually went on to play Punky Brewster, I think. Ameri- what the f- American TV show, a bit like Blossom, but with a ginger chick. <laughs> She's the chick that goes, I think you went to the Galleria. That's they, fucking nuts. Well, they're retrofitting it out. Jonathan Mosso wrote this script, and I think fans are just going, maybe that red-haired girl. But I like that, though. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Contingency. <laughs> well, I know. It's kind of like retro, It's like apologist retrofitting, isn't it? Meh. Nah. Oh, I think it could be. Because she says, oh, no, we can't really talk about it. because <coughs> it's- Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet Jesus. We can't talk about it because it's a think in the next few minutes. But uh, she mentions the fact that she's like, yes, oh, my God, I knew you were. We went to school and you just disappeared. Right, this is where I'm going to prove you wrong. When she gets pulled over by the cops, right? And you p- don't think he buy Right, do you think she kills the cop? Because oh. she gets a gun. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, okay. So I'm going to play this now. Right. To prove to you that she says I like your gun and yeah. not your bike. Kelly, I know she says I like your gun. I was just fucking with you. Oh, you cunt. I don't think I've actually said that word since we've started this. Uh, oh, no, you have. Have I? Yeah, it's every other freaking word with you. Oh, God. Am anyway, I, am I that rude? would you like to have some goofs, Eleanor? Is it a goof? Yeah, it's a major cock up. Cock up. Bing! Bing. <laughs> uh, the first goof is when the TX is uh, pulled over by the police officer at the beginning of the film. Yeah. The officer walks Gork. up to her in the Lexus. Lexi. Lexi. <laughs> Hang on, that can't be right. When the TX... I'm, I'm, I obviously haven't studied these in notes before <laughs> I started the show. Number one. When the TX is pulled over by the police officer at the beginning of the film, the uh, the officer walks up to her in the Lexus. <laughs> what the fuck is that? You've just repeated yourself. Oh, okay. I've, <laughs> I, I've basically split one goof into two. Okay. I'll take the two away. <laughs> my apologies. That was not sanctioned by my government. <laughs> Come on, Ethan. When the TX is pulled over by the police officer at the beginning of the film, the officer walks up to her in the Lexus. Just before the officer says, Lady, do you have any idea how fast you were going? We see the TX's mouth moving as though she's speaking, but we hear nothing. Oh, there we go. Right, let's have a look at that bit again then, basically. She moves her mouth, but she doesn't actually say anything. When he says, do you have any idea how fast you were going, lady? You can see her mouth moving, but there's no sound coming out of it. Oh, is that because she's trying to figure out what to... S- I'm confused. I'm so confused. It's about to come up now, though. So let's let's listen to the conversation that they have. Mm-hmm. I've just realised that's the wrong fucking thing. Go on. Turn it. What is sexy? Apparently, Victoria's Secret. Pleather. Lady, have you any idea how fast you were going? Let me see your license and registration. I like your gun. What? Well, her mouth slightly opens. I wouldn't say it looks like she's talking. I don't know. I need to study this bloody thing before we started the show. (laughs) Maybe she was just pretending to breathe. Uh... (laughs) 
So yeah, I reckon she killed him. She, pro- she probably a big ripped mess, his... though. Yeah, but she can give a fuck, mate. <laughs> I don't know. Did she eat him? I don't know. Put his body in the boot? Just seems like a big person to kill, really. Like a... Shock him in the mouth. <laughs> anyway, Claire Dane, she's in Homeland. She's in My So-Called Life from 1994. It's a TV show. fucking hated Homeland. I thought it was... Shit. Romeo and Juliet. Shop Girl. It's what's a Steve what's Martin Shop film. Girl? I think that's written and directed by Steve Martin. Let me have a look. Uh, do we know who her dry lunch of a fiancé is? We do. And we will come to him in the next episode. Ooh, oh, gotta you come and your, back. You, you and your cliffhangers. Doing well, that. he's he's got more of a scene actually in the next uh, episode, really. So that's why I put the uh, thing there. He's kind of like Martin esque, isn't he? A bit wet. Yeah. <laughs> At least Martin's funny though. But that was an interesting thing we gleaned from this episode that Claire Kate Brewster, yeah, uh, John Connor's future wife, might be the ginger girl from Terminator Two, saying, "I think he went to the said he went to the Galleria. The Galleria. Yeah. The, gallery. the two girls on the sh- on he the goes, uh, street. The Galleria. Corner. Have you seen this boy? <laughs> He's hot. A uh, bit of product placement, Victoria's Secret, as yes. we know. Yes. They do underwear. And I'm pretty sure that's Adriana Lima on the poster. It is. Do you know what? That slag tried to fucking claim that... She I didn't think... sleep with Justin Bieber. No, when I think... Oh, it was years ago now, but I think at the time she was like 22 or 23 or maybe older than that, and she was trying to claim that she was a virgin. It's like, bullshit, she fucking is. Hmm. I know, right? Hmm. Trying to give... I was like, you're a Victoria model fucking... Victoria's Victoria's model. Victoria's Secret's model. I know. I was watching you chew those sweets and I was getting sweet envy. (laughs) Actually, there was an interesting uh, documentary in the late 90s. I can't find it anywhere on the internet, but basically this reporter infiltrated all the model agencies. Oh, is this when they were like keeping them really thin and stuff like that and all these models? No, no, but they were signing girls up to like, I I think it was Elite or something, but they changed the name basically. Hmm. After this scandal, as any company does, they just kind of like, they say they sack the people in question, but then they just give them different positions Mm. and then they change the name of the company. And that's what happened. But basically they were just getting all these like 14 year old girls coked up. Oh yeah. Taking them to like Milan fashion shows and stuff and just giving them loads of drugs. And all the model bosses were just banging all these like super hot, uh, just into their teens, beautiful girls, basically. Ethan, that sounds like your dream job. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what what, the fuck what you more th- can you say <laughs> but yeah it was exposed and basically they changed the name of the model agency I can't remember what the bloody name of the model agency was so what is that what Victoria's Secrets is now then model agency name change after scandal scandal scandalous and now it's Agent Provocateur <laughs> yeah no it's uh, the internet is now sucking again no I think I've picked up a virus, you know, from trying to download uh, programs to try and get this sound to work. Programs? It's all those dirty tumblers you've been going on, Ethan. <laughs> we shan't mention what they are. Borgag.com. Cocks rubbing together. Daddy's little girl. <laughs> to be fair, they were for me. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, we've I just watched we've the We've discovered trailer. Tumblr. You can literally type in any <laughs> sick uh, sexual... <laughs> Anything you can think of, and then write Tumblr after it. T U M B L R, not Tumblr. Tumblr. Oh yeah, it's and spent, you spent can literally find. <laughs> I've lost many hours, and the thing is with those Tumblrs, it's no go to the next page or click. Well, just sometimes scroll it down. is. Sometimes no, it's it good is. ones. The good you can ones. Just scroll and it's scroll. It's a continuous and scroll. scroll and scroll. Of and just scroll. horrificness. I've literally worn down probably about thirty layers of skin on my index finger just from fucking scrolling through my phone. Yeah, okay. you call, call wow. it scrolling all you want. Wow, scrolling, scrubbing. Uh, listeners, I'm going to actually include a link at the bottom of these notes, which is uh, portions of Arnold Schwarzenegger's commentary from. Uh, the deep, the Blu-ray, basically, oh. and it's literally him just describing what's on screen. He gives no insight into, oh, this I like this part of the movie because this happened on set that day. There's none of that. It's just li- him going, yeah, I thought we like cast a female Terminator and they like the inflating breasts because you know, like some guys like big breasts, some guys like small <laughs> breasts. Oh my god! So this Terminator can do everything. She can infiltrate anyone and get anything she wants. It's like, yeah. So uh, that link is actually at the bottom of the notes. You oh, will find it on the YouTube channel. He's, he's so wise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, yeah, that's all we have, really. And the last bit, if anything can put you off marriage, it's going to a fucking hardware store and picking out what fucking plates you're going to buy. 
Yeah. All that shit, man. I fucking hate Those that Those days shit. are ahead of you, I'm sure, Ellie. No, I'm never getting married. Oh, uh, yeah, you say that. But no, uh, I've got no desire to get married at all. My parents didn't do it, so I won't do it. Uh, the, well, people who don't want to get married, I read in the paper today, can that want civil services. Civil? What? Yeah. People who go, I never, I refuse to get married. They still want these new civil services like the gays no, do. No, no, not at all. I don't want anything. So like, why do you need to call it anything? We don't. Yeah. Just, meh. Would you ever get married, Ethan? Never. Why? Uh, everyone I know is divorced. Mm-hmm. All my peers who got married mm-hmm. are divorced. Or, or unhappy. It doesn't actually work. No. I think it's an idea that salts you at a young age. I think girls are brought up to think this will be the best day of my life. <laughs> and they've been seen too much, far too Disney princessing in their Even lives. Even as a kid, I never... So many of my friends, when they were girls, and they were... well girls i don't have many female friends but of the females i do know even amy used to like when she was young she'd put a pillowcase over her head and pretend that she was a bride with a veil well, and that's because her dad used to waterboard her <laughs> 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 she'd probably be a much better rounded individual if he actually had well, she's pretty rounded now <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, that's so true um i never 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 even dreamt about that it's never been a part of just no i remember i always thought my parents were married up until the age of about 13 and i was like mom how come i've never actually seen any wedding photos or anything like that and my parents both just kind of turned to me and she went basically you're a bastard because we never actually got married and i was like okay actually when ellie actually did say that her mom like started tearing up and had to Weeping. turn away and then she went to the bookcase and they uh, took out this like uh Pulled a book out and took out this like whiskey miniature and just started guzzling booze. My mum doesn't drink. She my then mom, staggered my mom. out. She, <laughs> fell, <laughs> she fell through the screen doors. She's and, a uh, wannabe forest bride because she's never been a bride. Oh, bless her. Oh. It is quite sad though because I did ask her one time. I was like, would you like to get married? She's like, yeah, I would like to, but your dad you know, your dad never wanted to, so I just didn't. I was like, oh, mum, you're, su- you're such a good sub. <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> corralling Ellie back into the pasture... Uh, because she's discussing anything but the movie. Hey, uh, we've discussed the movie. We shall return tomorrow with episode six. Yeah, there you go. Yes, which is uh, uh, ten to twelve, basically. Woo! So Ethan's tune in for that. Age. There'll be uh, a lot more yeah. exciting. Uh, we've actually got quite a lot coming up tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh. More cock ups. No, oh. but uh, I might move that to a different episode. Basically, when the truck chase happens, there's so much like stuff. It's gonna be like an hour-long show, I think. Oh my god! It's ridiculous. We'll need lots of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. And also, oh, you why, know what? I've why been clever. Is, why is this? Uh, just before we do go, mm-hmm. what's this weird kind of like Viking-looking shield that uh, the fi- the fiance? I don't uh, know. It looks like one of those things you hit with a, like a drumstick to make some weird noise if you're at a festival with dreads. True. It looks true. like a, a panel in that. We haven't <laughs> discussed her dad at all. She goes, Dad, why do you keep blowing me off? No, we haven't. I saw the dirty side of that, obviously. What? She said she asks her dad why he keeps blowing her off. <laughs> Who's her dad? Who's he as an actor? We'll come to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ethan really wants to end this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I've been Ethan McKinley. I've been Ellie Fitzgerald. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Baby. <laughs> That's just way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, blew it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm stupid in my head. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger.